Democrats are finding it harder and harder to win the votes of ordinary American citizens. Instead, they have a new strategy, create a new voter pool at 16-year-olds vote, open the borders, and now give the vote even to violent criminals who are still behind bars. In Iowa on Saturday, Bernie Sanders argued that those who break America's laws still should be able to help make them. In your home state of Vermont, that incarcerated people are allowed to vote. Yes. Would you commit to that idea? Would you commit to that on a nationwide scale? I think that is absolutely the direction we should go. Let incarcerated people vote. Keep in mind that plenty of prisons are located in rural areas. Most of them are, actually. It's perfectly possible that inmates could wind up running the town that holds them because they'd be the biggest voting bloc. Expect that to be a Democratic litmus test by the end of May. Author and columnist Mark Stein joins us tonight. Mark, the inmates should not just be running the asylum, but the town. Uh, yeah. The thing to remember about Bernie Tucker is he's actually the front runner because... Uh, to yes. continue with your asylum uh, uh, analogy, in uh, the land of the entirely deranged, the fitfully sane man is king. <laughs> and, and, and Bernie is the proverbial stop clock. You, just ten minutes ago, you yeah. mentioned a burst of sanity on immigration, where he, he said, uh, we can't have open borders because all the world's poor will want to come here. He sounded as crazy as you, Tucker. I he know. sounded as evil as you. He sometimes you, says that, I know. I know. I can't, I can't tell them apart, Bernie Carlson or Tucker Sanders. <laughs> and then every so often, he, he, just, he, he just genuflects uh, to the insanity of the base and the party. But he's actually much shrewder than Kamala Harris and Cory Booker That's and all sure. the rest of it. And, and if he doesn't blow it like he did last time... Um, he, he's, he's actually uh, going to be, as I said, the uh, at least fitfully sane guy, the proverbial stop clock in the uh, Democrat Can, can I ask you a question that's been bothering me? Why couldn't you have a candidate who was populist in economics, who wasn't, you know, any kind of supply side or libertarian economics, but more conservative on the social issues, you know, who, who was focused on the country rather than the rest of the world, who was pro-family? Those are not incompatible yeah. positions, are they? Well, I'd say that's actually where the sweet spot in politics yes. is. You remember, like, 10, 15 years ago, we used to have these people like Christy Whitman and George Pataki who were so-called fiscally uh, conservative and socially right. liberal. And I'd say, actually, the sweet spot is probably to be fiscally, uh, fiscally liberal and culturally conservative. Yes. And that's where old-school old socialists like uh, Bernie uh, Sanders would have been quite comfortable being. But Bernie's brother is a, like an old-school British Labour Party socialist. He's all about the workers, by which he means the British workers, not <laughs> six and a half billion other workers who want to move to you once you open the borders. Such and that's actually, I think that is actually the sweet spot. I'd be very sympathetic guys. to a candidate. I don't think they're smart enough to do that. So i got to ask mm. about this. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez started sporting a new accent while speaking at Al Sharpton's extremely tax-exempt conference mm. last week. Watch. The fight's been long, y'all. This is what organizing looks like. That's right. This is what building power looks like. I'm proud to be a bartender. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Kazia <laughs> Cortez says she's from the Bronx, and she's always spoken that way. She says it was code switching and that her normal day-to-day -day voice is the fake one. <laughs> but she's not the first Democrat <laughs> right. to discover a long-lost accent when speaking before an African-American audience. You'll remember. Watch. I don't feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. Mark, if you patronized an audience that much, would you feel shame? Uh, well, look, in fairness, I'd say Alexandria is... Hillary's terrible at it. Absolutely yeah. terrible. And Alexandria, if you're going to do it, you have to do it with... And, and I speak as a foreigner, so I can't tell the difference between Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and William F. Buckley Jr. All you Americans <laughs> sound the same to me. But uh, Hillary can't do it. And actually, I think that gets to the, the heart of it. Alexandria can get away with it in a way that Hillary can't, because I think for Hillary and Joe Biden, when he was doing, they're yeah. going to put you all back in chain. I think those, those people are saying, I want to be something other than white. 
Take my yes. whiteness away from me. I'm Indian like Elizabeth Warren. I'm Hispanic like Beto O'Rourke. Or I'm just whoever I'm standing in front of at the moment like Hillary. And Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, whatever you say about her, is doing it with a much lighter touch uh, no, that's, than I think it's a fair uh, Hillary point. Clinton. I wonder, though, we're roughly the same age. Didn't you grow up in a world where people were encouraged to be who you naturally are? When you were a kid, yeah. could you imagine living in a country where people are supposed to be ashamed of how they were born? I thought that was the opposite of what we wanted. No, no, and I, I lived through a whole generation of stupid songs about being authentic. Uh, Whitney Houston, learning to love yourself is the greatest love of all. Sammy <laughs> Davis Jr., I gotta be me. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, we have, we have uh, uh, politicians who, who are actually trying to pretend to be... So Elizabeth Warren is Harvard Law School's first woman of colour, and nobody laughs. That's the insanity. Uh, we laugh at it, but everyone who matters in America takes that nonsense perfectly seriously. Do, I mean, is it sustainable long-term to tell people they should be ashamed of how they were born? No, I don't think so. I think it's actually psychologically unhealthy. Um, and I think that's what's interesting. For someone like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she's a young woman and, like, she's goofing around with that crowd. For Hillary, it's, it's, it actually says something appalling about our permanent yeah. political class, that they can be in front of us for four decades and still not know who they are. I think it's really... I agree with that. It's really unhealthy, I think. Yeah. Mm. Mark Stein, great to see you. Thank you for that.